Hey, everybody, and welcome. And we are here with another one of our interviews for Wisdom Con. And today I am here with Alan Steinfeld, uh, who is an incredible writer and the producer of New Realities, which is a wonderful platform on YouTube. Please do check out that uh, YouTube platform and su subscribe. Um, before I introduce Alan, I'm going to talk a little bit about the conference and what we're going to be doing. Um, the conference is a three-day conference with speakers from around the world that are going to be discussing different topics, everything from spirituality to ET contact, in order to help us understand what we need now to integrate the tools in order moving into the next three, four years of change and healing. So I am very excited to introduce all the amazing minds that are going to be sharing with us their wisdom uh, of the past, the future, and the present in what we need to know now. And today, uh, Alan Steinfeld, let me read a little bit about him, is the author and curator of editor of the new book, Making Contact, Preparing for the New Realities of Extraterrestrial Existence. This compilation of writing, the ground for what will be the momentous occasion in human history, the full-on acknowledgement that we are not alone and reality is nothing like what we have imagined. So without further ado, do you alan welcome thank you so much for joining me well thank you so much it's always nice to be with you geraldine um yeah you know when you read that introduction i, I think why is that such a hard thing to believe that we're not alone i mean what is the problem right i mean i i never thought that we were i mean it just seemed obvious but other people, I guess, you know, were conditioned or just brought up or never thought like you're from the sort of mainstream world out there. Did you ever think of that about that before your awakening? Yeah, you know, and that's a really great topic. I mean, before, yes, there was this stigma, right? This idea that if you believed in aliens, you know, something's wrong with you or you're kind of a little kooky. Or, I, and the way I, I got into it was through consciousness. I mean, through meditation. When I got deeper into meditation, that's when I started to question consciousness. And then that whole world opened up for me. But for many of of us. I mean, there are many contactees who do experience the phenomena, whether if it's lights in the skies or they have some kind of contact experience, but they just don't know how to put that into words. And I think it's because in our culture, we fail the education, the, the real education about the contact to allow us to even have permission to have the conversations, feel comfortable about that, and even know how to explain what we've experienced. Um, so I think, um, you know, books like your book that you just made are incredibly valuable pieces to help us understand what's happening and give us permission to have these conversations and ask these questions. What was your purpose behind the book? What is your mission, your vision for why we need this book now? Well, thank you for asking that question. And thanks for your work in this world. You are a leader and this wisdom conference, I think, is, is another piece in this big puzzle so that's why i put this book together because i you know i was i guess since the 1980s i've been involved in ufos i had early childhood experiences i've always knew there was something out there but in 87 i had a sort of contact major contact experience where you know it was this basic abduction sort of missing time and uh felt like i was in suspended animation so i got obsessed with what's going on how come no one's talking about that is this real and even when you say um you know people used to laugh at it, there's a part of me that is still attached to that old paradigm because we were brought up in that world saying could this really be true this is even after my experience even after seeing objects in the sky having dreams you know encounters marks on my body i mean there's the programming is so deep and pervasive and and ingrained i i think in each one of us that there's at least for me maybe people have had much more um uh present time experiences it, it might be different but even my mind says could this really be true and then of course i go to all the conferences and it all makes sense and i and and the reason i put this book together is because on one level i know this is real i know we are not alone in the universe i know we're part of a much bigger cosmology and science and everything that we've learned is keeping us away from that so 
we're all sort of schizophrenic. We're all split if you're in this culture. So this is why your conference is so important because we're here to educate each other ourselves and share information. But when I'd go to the UFO conferences, there were brilliant people. Each one had their own sort of angle on the phenomena. So I'd hear 20 lectures and they all were in some agreement, but they all had a little different piece. So I figured the only way to really cover this field and to understand what making contact means would be to tell the story from many points of view. And that's what this book is. It's a collection of essays of the best and the brightest in the field, people who've devoted their life, really their whole adult life to this subject. I mean, I'd say everyone in this book pretty much have committed their, their not livelihood, but their mm, passion in life to this subject. And um, that's true of me. So, and none of them agree, but they don't disagree. They just have a different part of the elephant. You know, that, that story about the elephant, blind men and the elephant. And so they all have a different part of the elephant. And I figured if we can put all those parts of the elephant together, we might actually get an elephant. We might actually <laughs> see what's really going on from, it's like a mosaic. When you look at the mosaic up close, it just looks like individual tiles. You have to stand back and you get a, a view of the whole picture. So by reading all these various points of view, that actually go from the external. I start with Nick Pope, who's just looking at the nuts and bolts of hardware and government cover up. And then I go deeper into people looking at the idea of consciousness and the effect on human, the human system and go deeper into people who have had unconscious contact and then conscious contact, contactees more like you. And um, so I go from the exo to the exo the inner the outer to the inner and the readers on a journey as they kind of go through this book so they start at the outside and they say okay that makes sense and then you know slowly like like boiling a frog in water they're like in there you know that story about you know slowly boiling the frog in the water not that anyone's a frog or we're boiling anyone but slowly <laughs> they get right. sucked in to understanding this phenomena where if they would have started with someone who say, oh yeah, they've met these ETs and they've been to the Pleiades. If you start there, I think you lose a lot of people. But if you tell it as a narrative, and I, I was a literature major, so I understood narratives and arcs and, and how there's no real char main character in here except the fact that this phenomena is sort of changeable and moving and dramatic in many ways. So I just take the reader from the exterior to the interior with many different people, 11 different voices or, or 12, if you count JJ and Desiree's um, together. Um, and then they, people can sit back and say, well, what makes sense from their worldview? And what do I have to stretch and what is possible and what's unbelievable? And even the unbelievable, when you start it slowly, can be considered. Um, uh, 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 and it's, it is unbelievable, but you know why? Because it's not about belief. <laughs> it's not. Exactly. So. No, that you're absolutely right. And I mean, it's, it's very interesting, the different areas that you cover in your book, which are really, really important for us to understand that all of them play a role, you know, the different perspectives of different people's experiences really help us put a puzzle piece together of yes. what this contact is all about. And it's really quite complex. And I think that's the kind of element in the, um, I guess, the seriousness that we need to take the topic um, and people that are newly coming into the field is to really understand that there's, it's a multifaceted thing. You know, it's not just very black and white. Um, and one of the topics that you're talking about and actually what you'll be presenting at the conference, um, you know, thinking abstractly, you're talking about alien language. It's not about words. It's about impressions of thought that take us into the unknown realities beyond cognition. And I know that as a support group facilitator, many contactees 
have this incredible moment where they connect with this kind of language and it just broadens you multidimensionally. So can you speak to that and tell us a little bit more about what, what you will be presenting? I love the way you say that, you know, and present it with quite an awareness and intelligence. So uh, just picking up on a little bit, and I'll get to your question. This is a subjective experience. There is no no two people have the same experience. They could be actually taken at the same time, but as it filters through our consciousness, everyone, your experience, Geraldine, is unique. I mean, people have had similar things, but nobody's had it just exactly the way you do. And that's what we're discovering about this phenomena. Um, it is it 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 portrays a subjective reality that actually in quantum physics, there is no objective reality. The, the observer influences what they observe. So this is become, I mean, almost cliche, the quantum idea that, you know, that we are all part of, you, like you can never, you can't look at your own face. You just see out with your eyes. So it, the world is your experience. No one can tell you it's, it's different than what your experience is. You can learn and be educated, but you know, for each of us, we are each living a unique experience. So people can see the same object, but have totally different impressions. I often say it's like going to a movie, you know, 10 people go to the movie, you ask them what it's about, they'll tell you 10 different things. So this means that our understanding of reality is different from each other. Yeah, there's places, of course, that we agree. But when we get into this particular area where there's no designated uh, touch points, everything becomes fluid, everything becomes abstracted. The, I mean, when what, but we're not educated that way. So in this workshop, I'll be talking about this idea between Newtonian physics and quantum physics. In quantum physics, like I said, there's no object, objective observer. There's no solidity. And in Newtonian physics, it's like, you know, you have a question, you have a result. You have, it's like, I talk about throwing the dice and I'll talk about this in the workshop. When you throw the dice, it lands and there's your answer. That's the wave function of possibility has collapsed. So when the wave function collapses, you get like, oh, and everyone can agree. That's what we look at, the collapsed wave function. Are you following me? I mean, you... absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Please so, continue. so we in quantum computing, they don't calculate the results. They calculate the possibilities. So everything is in superposition. If you talk just about the roll of dice and in, in the uh, Newtonian world, you get the answer, that's the answer. But when you're rolling the dice, I, I developed this uh, idea in Las Vegas, you have 36 combinations. So that's the superposition, these 36 combinations, that's what quantum computing, which is a lot more advanced than just regular computing because they compute possibilities. This is the world we really live in because there are no, I mean, yes, you can see a dice land, but everything's moving. This is a fluid universe. There are no right. concretized reality. There is no ultimate collapse of the wave function. Every, Thing is changing into everything else. So if we can look at the world more abstractly, more as fluid, there's a book in Kabbalah called God is a Verb. Everything is a verb. Everything is moving. We're moving. We're changing the molecules in our body. So it's, it's very Newtonian to think that there are results. And there are if you look at the world in a very limited way, but if you look at the world in the way I think the ETs and who knows what they're looking at, which is fluid superposition in and out of reality, bending time, um, abstract awareness, you know, artists who have had experiences, um, their, their art becomes much more evolved, much more complex, much more abstracted. So that's where this idea came from. There's um, 
there's a multiple dimensions to abstract awareness. It's like, um, it's like we, if you don't collapse the wave function into saying this is it, this could be anything. So it even happens in practical applications. If you go up to a tree and you think that's a tree and you have an idea of what a tree is, you're going to miss the mystery of that being. But if you don't, if you just see these forms and we have to live in both worlds, I mean, you can't walk around with out identifying things, but don't get attached to your identification. So if you see a tree or a plant or or something and you sort of let go, become more lucid and fluid in that label, you'll get a deeper impression of that living being. And I think this is what the Native Americans and the indigenous people do. They don't put things into boxes is because as soon as you say, oh, I know what that is, or I know who you are, as soon as I say that, then I miss the mystery of who you are, because we're not put in boxes. So I, let's not even do this to each other. So that's what I'm saying. This is the next, I feel this next level. So I try to illustrate this in the title of my book. Do you see that? Absolutely. It's so perfect. And I think that's exactly where we're at right now, isn't it? I mean, this is the information we need now, because how better to deal with an ever-changing world than to learn how to bring yourself into that place where you're constantly okay with this unknown, this constant evolution that we are. And, that, and those are just the laws of creation and the laws of, of our reality. If we can understand them, it allows us to kind of move through, you know, our um, uh, perceived laws of uh, oh, you're right. And how I to navigate. Yeah, and I made the title a, a verb. So we're making. It's the. It's a process. It's not like we've made contact, because we're, and, and it's right. a deepening of the process. But I also put it in the title. Do you see the little asterisk between yes, making and contact? I I I sort of forced the publisher. I said, no, we need to put this asterisk in the title. <laughs> and actually, I think it's on every page of the book, even in the mm -hmm. uh, the making asterisk contact, because I said I wanted to illustrate this idea of what it means to think abstractly. So, what does the asterisk mean to you? What do, what does that mean to you? The asterisk. Uh, for me, well, uh, utilizing it to uh, highlight certain something, bring attention to something, perhaps. Is that is that how you use it? Yes. Well, don't, it's not, uh, it's abstract. So it means yeah. what that means to you, but it also is sort of an asterisk, a mini star. It's right, a star. absolutely. It mm -hmm. is also a kind of burst of rays. It's also like a compass with a needle in many directions. Mm -hmm. It's many, many things. It's not one thing. So, and this is the idea of abstract thinking where you have a variety of meanings. This is why emojis are more powerful than words because if I give you a thumbs up, but it doesn't just mean yes, it means like right on, I'm with you. So this is a kind of a progression into mm. um, the abstraction of language. And if we can live more in this, unknown without concretizing our our vocabulary and we we still need to communicate to each other but it becomes more telepathic it becomes more um about apprehension versus comprehension as soon as you comprehend something like i'm saying you identify it you've collapsed the wave function if you can apprehend it which means you have a sort of feeling about it then you're floating in the abstract and you're and we're closer to this unknown quality, but we have a sense of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is what your your presentation is about, essentially, is you're yeah. talking about this kind of alien language in a term where we're we're trying to understand communication on a whole different level, perhaps this abstract understanding of reality, which is which is incredible. And um Tell us a little bit about the workshop that you're going to be doing. 
what's what what did I write in the workshop there? Because um, I think you were going to uh, take us through. Let me just take a look. Oh, all oh, oh, right, all oh, right. I got it. I got it. Because I'm going to base. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to kind of jump off with this abstract awareness and then talk about how quantum physics, consciousness, and UFOs are all very similar in how. And I touched upon this here. Mm-hmm. Um, Consciousness, whatever that is, is 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 the abstract essence of our being. It is non-local reality. Consciousness. This is how people can remote view by being in this, being having an awareness that the mind is being received or the consciousness is being received by the brain. So the brain is your hardware, right? And the, and your personality is your software. Those are the programs that, you know, the machine comes in and, but what else do you need to operate? Let's say a computer is your, you got your hardware, your computer, you got your software, your applications. And what else do you need for that to operate it to work, to work? Well, I, a source of energy to bring all of those to life and direct. And you need one more thing, I think. Well, maybe you said it. You need the operator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The op without an operator, the computer just sits there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the operator, which is consciousness, uses the software of the personality, the hardware of the body in order to communicate in this world or if we're in computers, in the computer world without an operator. There is, there is no communication without consciousness. There is nothing. The body is an, an empty shell, you know? So this is, this is sort of, so um, quantum physics, consciousness, UFOs have this sort of relationship to consciousness. And I think this is how the UFOs run by using consciousness and directing it to manipulate time and space. Excellent. So sort of what I'll be going into. Beautiful. And you said uh, you will also be facilitating uh, remote viewing. Can you tell us a little bit about remote viewing or if you, if you can tell us about No, that? no, I can't because <laughs> that's, that's an example I will be using right. of how consciousness is non-local. Yeah. So Remote viewing was something developed by the Stanford Research Institute. It was originally, it was like, you know, the Russians had this psychic spying program, but the CIA didn't want to call it psychic spying. That called, that sounded too weird. So they called it remote viewing, which sounds a lot more scientific, but it's basically using your mind to, to project itself anywhere it wants. Like if you told me, you had something in another room, I'd be able to, if I was quiet enough to look into that room and see what's there. So um, remote viewing is the ability to use your mind non-locally and find targets and understand that we are accessing the field, but you know, we're picking up consciousness. It's like a radio, you know, the radio, if you look, open the radio, you're not going to find the musicians or the announcer in the radio. Right. Mm -hmm. And are you? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No. Are you going to find the announcer in the radio? In the radio? No, (laughs) you're going to hear them through the radio, but not in the radio. If you open up the radio, you're not going to find them. Exactly. That's your brain. It's picking up a signal of you, but you're not in your body. I mean, you're, you're in your body, but you're more, your body's in you, essentially, the bigger you, that's your body's in the essence of you. So in remote viewing, just to answer that question, I separate the non-local awareness from the local awareness. The local awareness is all that stuff that you're recycling in your brain all the time, like, Oh, did I pay that bill? Did I call that person? What are we having for dinner? This is this is the local reality that we're thinking about. But the non-local is, oh, I'm looking at this picture. Quiet your mind and tune into where I'm where I am or where I am. You know, I'm out somewhere. Tell me where I am. So 
that's tuning into the signal, not the noise. And then we'll go into that too. Great. Can you expand a little bit more? You said the field. What is the field? Can you expand on that? Yeah. Thank you for answer, ask, asking that. The field of awareness is, um, well, it's all of us. It's, it's, it's this non-local field we're all connected to. So I could send you a thought and it is, and you could pick that up because we're all in fields, fields within fields, actually. We're in the human field and, um, you know, there's something called the morphogenetic field where all humans have, have um, resonate with a certain thought. Like, you know, before, um, before the 1900s, no one understood what the term ego was. But because of the psychology of the 20th century, everyone knows what ego is. It's like, and that's just acceptable. It's somehow that word got um, filtered into the collective consciousness of humans. And so it's interesting that people just didn't know that word. Freud sort of developed it as a sense of I, and now everyone says, oh, it's your ego or it's this. And, and it's like, oh, it's my ego. So even if you've never studied psychology, you understand the difference because that's just an example of how a term or an understanding had filtered into the collective awareness of the human field. They've done, you know, the hundredth monkey uh, experiment. You know, the hundredth monkey. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. So the hundredth monkey is everyone, all the monkeys on a certain island decided to wash their potatoes because it was more digestible or it was one monkey. It started with one monkey and that one monkey taught all the other monkeys well, look, wash your potato and you'll eat more of it because it won't be full of sand. So wash it in the ocean and they eat it. And then when a hundred monkeys relatively learned how to wash their potato, all the other monkeys of that species on neighboring islands just decided to wash their potatoes. So that's an understanding of how it was in the field of that species. So Right now, me and you and a lot of other people are trying to reorient the human field to a higher level, let's call it wisdom, a higher level of knowing by, by making these subjects every day, by talking about it, by integrating it to our lives, by, by knowing we're connected, we're inserting that energetics into the human field. So at some point, it'll become self-evident. I mean, we're doing the hard work. We're doing the heavy lifting here, Geraldine. So other people can just say, well, of course, it was, I knew that all along. So that yes, like well, thank you so much for all the amazing work that you do. And Alan, you really are, I mean, you're a pioneer. I mean, you've been doing this for such a long time and you've been, you know, you're always so clear in your message and the directive and what you're doing. So I really admire that. It's just incredible and inspiring. And now, you know, you created this incredible book. So where can we connect with you? You know, where do we find you? How do we hear more about your work? Well, thank you. I also want to tell you before I go there, yeah. I have, I think on my next book might even be more amazing. I mean, I'm wow. planning this book, but yeah, yeah. I think it'll really... Uh, I don't know, convince people. I don't know. I've been working on this before I actually even started this book, but I think, yeah. Wow. I yes. can't well, wait. That sounds I, incredible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Yeah, I think it, I don't know. We'll see. But I think it could be a big game changer for a certain population. But wow. anyway, yes, this book you can get on Amazon. Look, go to Barnes & Noble. Ask for this book. Making Contact, Alan Steinfeld. Uh, write a review on 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 Amazon or anywhere else. Russell Targ just read it. Do you know Russell Targ? Yes. Is? Wow, that's wonderful. And he wrote a very nice review on Amazon about that. Wow. And so I've got yeah. And 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 Foster Gamble just wrote a review, you know Foster? Yes, of course. Well mm -hmm. so I've gotten some really good reviews on yeah. this from people that I really value their opinion. So also I'm doing YouTubes all the time. Is this, are we doing the YouTube now? Are you going with live? Um, no, no, but we can reach you at New Realities is the name of your channel, yes? 
Yes, youtube.com slash new realities. I can even put this up if you want on my new realities. It would be wonderful to do that. And we'll also put the links below so that you can grab the book and you can grab, you know, your your information. Do you have a website, Alan? Well, I did have a new realities.com website. And, you know, it was hacked and then it was. It's it's taking a nap. Okay. (laughs) No problem. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I cannot wait for you. Did you learn anything from this conference conversation? Oh, what did you get from this conversation? Absolutely. I mean, for me, um, having these conversations is is like the reason for life, in my opinion, because they really recenter you and they bring you back to what's important. What's important is to remember to embody that expansive mind, that constant evol- evolution of the self in all the things that we're doing, not getting identified with anything. And that's really important because right now it's like information overload from every direction on every level. And a lot of people are experiencing chaos and confusion and disconnect. And when we recognize that that integration and that connection with the self, you know, and come into that all seeing mind, it's like there almost there is no point for holding into that suffering in the body, right? It doesn't have the same purpose as it would when you were stuck having a, you know, very close perspective. So, I mean, these, and this conversation is incredibly valuable for all of us right now. And um, the more we can learn how to do that, and it is sometimes challenging, the better. So I am, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, can you tell the audience who else is coming up at the conference? Absolutely. Let me go ahead and bring that up. And And um, share it too, so we can all see it. Yeah, well, um, actually, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. Let me go ahead and open that. I mean, Um, I I can see. (laughs) My my biggest job, though, is to make you laugh. That you succeeded. So let me okay, show good. you this, everybody. Um, all right. So this is our Wisdom Con page. And let me just open I this. I can't believe you've done all this yourself. This is great, Geraldine. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, yeah, so we have, let me go over to our speakers page here. And um, we have, of course, Alan. We have Dan Winter. Oh, who, I look, you know Dan Winter? I do. I, I love him. He is incredible. <laughs> Real, real genius. He is a, he is a mind. Like I tell Dan, please, let me digest that sentence and then go, because (laughs) I lose him. I mean, I saw every time I interview, I say, Dan, one sentence at a time and you know but anyway yes i'm glad you have him there. yes he's he's amazing he can really link the physics with you know your life and why we need that right now so oh, you know amazing. i visited him in the south of france he has a beautiful did place. you really yeah i heard he lives over there i heard it was carnival that's so yeah, great let's let's go there yes oh so- my god yes tell me when um we also have joanne richards who recently published her book about her life and her life experiences and her transformation process so I'm really excited to have her. What was her transformation? What is what? Uh... Um, yeah. So um, she, her husband, actually was an ex-military, and I always forget his first name. I I forget his name. What was his name? I think it was. Yeah, but what did she say? Mark her Richard. book about. Yeah, so basically her husband was imprisoned um, wrongfully, and they were really involved in, I I believe it's the secret space program, and this involvement with, I think, reptoids and and draconians. And so they have like a lot of involvement with that. And so Joanne Richard uh, really went through a whole process, and she wrote a life story about that and how she evolved from that in her spiritual awakening. And she's also uh, works a lot with magic and energy and healing as well. So she's going to be discussing that. Um, and of course, I will be presenting. We also have Preston Dennett, who oh, I is like Preston. I he's love Preston. He's so great. Uh huh. Yeah. He's going to be talking about the healing power of UFOs. Oh, and he, good. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's important. Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, and I think it's perfect in alignment with what we're doing. We also have Neil Gower, and he'll be presenting. I don't not sure what he's going to surprise us with, but he will uh, be discussing. <laughs> he's a good friend, and he is an expert in ancient civilization, yes. sound, vibration. I think people will enjoy, and he's very passionate about what he presents. So yeah. great. Yeah, I love him. And you have 
And also we have Andrew Rogerwitz, and I'm so sorry, I always ruin the last name. Um, but he's an author, a psychic medium, and he's amazing with CE5s. I mean, every single day he puts up CE5 videos, and he talks Hello. about how he connects with it. And he's from Australia, so originally from New York, actually. He was a fighter fighter at 9-11, and okay. um, he has incredible stories about contact in his work. Um, um, so 9-11 thing tomorrow. Yeah. Means. Oh, yes. really? Interesting. Nine eleven. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh. Um, we also have Suzanne Ross. Who's? Uh, do you know Suzanne? I do. She okay. just interviewed me. Actually, I've known her for many years. Yeah. She's, she leads tours in Sedona and all yeah. around. Yes, I like Suzanne. Yeah. yeah, great. So she'll be presenting. We have Zane Daniel, who is a Hathor healer. He's an energy healer. So he will be presenting. Miguel Mendonza, he's the one that read, uh, wrote Meet the Hybrids um, with Barbara oh, Lamb. With Barbara Lamb. Some, oh, that's a great book. Someone just sent me a little clip from that. That is really great. Yeah, he also just wrote a new book recently called Wisdom, New and Old. And so I thought it was perfect because he kind of links a lot of this ancient wisdom with like new understanding of hybrids and consciousness. So I'm just very really excited. And you're calling your conference Wisdom. Yeah, yeah. My, my conference, and I was like, you're perfect. No, <laughs> no, but it was a perfect little uh, thing to uh, have there. We also have Jill Stein, who's a prenatal medium. So she will be discussing souls uh, incarnating into the body. Is that how you spell her name, Stein? Okay. Yes. S-T-I-E-N. Yeah. Usually it's, anyway, but I know a Jill Stein. Wasn't there a Jill Stein that ran for president? That's not the same one. That's not the same one. <laughs> <laughs> no. We also have Rachel Cooley, who's an angel therapy practitioner and an intuitive. So she will be discussing the angelic realms. We have Sonia Barrett. She's I a like Sonia Barrett. Me I, too. I met yeah. her. And she's very intense, very far out, very passionate. She's great. Yes. Another. She's a beautiful transformational um, author, oh. speaker, radio host. We also have Karen Swain, who's an author, a YouTuber, and sp spiritual leader from Australia. Yeah. So she'll be uh, talking a lot. Tanya Castillo, who's amazing soul from Portugal, and she's going to be discussing, um, uh, she's doing a workshop, and please don't quote me on the names, I don't know them by memory, but check out the website, you'll be able to find all of their workshops and their lectures. Most people are doing a lecture and a workshop, and it'll be a great opportunity for integration. We also have Eric Rains, who's an etheric alchemist. Um, we have Jeff Grainville, who's a f founder of Mindful Presents. I'm this just a huge conference. This is major. Yeah, we have some incredible speakers, um, but he is amazing. You guys have to hear. I just got off the phone with him. Um, his story about his son and the recovery. I mean, it's just incredible about uh, healing with the mind as opposed to using drugs, even in surgery. He talks about that wow. with his son. Yeah. Um, Kathleen Zemanski is a business feng shui master and astrologer, and she is a creator of Time Blazer, which is another amazing thing. Uh, please check that out. Time Blazer. What is it? Though? You know That's what? It's so cool. It is um, this calendar system with divine timing that utilizes your birth time and I mean your, all your astrology and basically it'll tell you day by day when something is productive for you and counterproductive wow. for you. Oh, I want to check that out. You need to check it out. Seriously, it actually is a life changer. I'm using it myself and oh, it, it is so accurate. Yeah. Is yeah. it? Yes. Oh, that, where can I get it? On the website? Timeblazer. Timeblazer.com. Yeah, I'll send you the link, and I'll also post the link down below, guys. But you right. will find her link for her website over here on this that little really blue good. thing. It's very cool. We also have my good friend Jahan uh, Kanzadeh, who will be talking about psychedelic evolution. He is the facilitator of the Psychedelic Society here in San Francisco, and he does incredible work. What um, psychedelics do they talk about? Um. Uh, all of them, all of them. He's He researches psychedelic and the effects on psychology, cosmology, consciousness, and he talks about, he, he leads the cosmology and consciousness program here in the California Institute of... Did you ever uh, work with those areas too? I did not personally, no. I have not delved in any of that. I don't think you need to. <laughs> I don't think so either. I think it would You're be... You're already psychedelic. No, yeah. you are. You're already connected. Yeah. But yeah. 
And who is this? Is yeah, so this is Bobby uh, Va Vasquez, who does biofuel tuning here in San Jose, and he's going to be doing some sessions. He His work is incredible and powerful in that he does tuning with the field, the auric field, uh, using tuning forks. So he'll be doing a lecture and a session for us. Also, Roman Light. Do you know Roman Light, Alan? I don't. So no. he is from Australia as well, and he is owner at Sacred Arithmetic. He is amazing. One of the people that very um, few people I've been able to have like complex conversations about the structure of the universe and the number numerical and mathematical structure of how that works and I mean he's incredible so he'll be talking about um, you know I'm not sure yet actually we didn't even have his presentation actually, you know Adam Apollo you ever talked to Alan Adam Apollo about that? um you know I haven't not I I think he's been at a couple Those conferences but together because that's exactly what Adam Apollo talks about this really time. Okay, very cool. Yes. I'll have to reach yes. out to him. We also have James Rink, who is a super who owns Super Soldier Talk on YouTube. Do you know James Rink? I think I met him at a conference. Yeah. Yeah, I, he's yeah. really interesting. So he was part of the Super Soldier program, and his story is incredible. And he has a huge, uh, you know, YouTube platform where he talks about Super yeah. Soldiers, and it's it's he does good work. We also have Eloise uh, Sulfrit, and she will be talking about Dharma Life Academy. She's the owner of Dharma Life. She does incredible Akashic record work and uh, talking about consciousness, integration, and all kinds of other things. So we also have um, Trisha Marges. You know Trisha Marges? Oh, she looks familiar. What is um, she? Yeah, she's from 90 Degree Turns. Uh, she was most recently speaking at a conference at uh, the ranch. What's the name of that ranch? Um, East Seti Ranch? Yeah, East Seti Ranch. So well, she's done a lot of work there. Seti? I have not been there oh, yet. Oh, let's go. Let me know yeah. when. Yeah. Um, you really do see things coming out of that mountain. I've been to, I've been there, the James Gilliland's place. Yeah. But exactly. what does ninety degree turn mean? Yeah. So, um, well, you know, I asked her that, and I think it's like the moment where you have that aha moment, and it's like you turn your life around, and you you know you begin to transform yourself. So I think her blog and her YouTube channel is called Ninety Degree Turn, and she focuses on talking about ET contact and. Um, you know, all of these areas. I think it's a Buckminster Fuller term, too, where he said, oh, everything really? you're going for or think you want, it's not actually 90 degrees from where you... That's right. That is right. Off. I think that's what he said. So if you think you're going for something, look 90 degrees. That's really what you're looking for. Something like that. That's Beautiful. Right. Thank you for that. Yeah, we'll have to ask her specifically what she meant. I'm sure there's many. Are we doing a panel with all these people? Yes, we will be having a panel at the end. I mean, I'd, I'd love to do that and connect with them so we can network and, you know, okay. get into some good topics. Okay. Um, we also have Joan, who is a psychic healer and author, and she's a writer of pendulum, uh, several pendulum healing books and uh, intuitive uh, working so yeah so that is our list um, and so uh, it's going to be a really great conference guys I mean I, I tried to pick people carefully so that we can address many different aspects of our spiritual evolution wow. and also everything from healing the inner body to you know the cosmos <laughs> that we need to talk about at this time um, so, so how much is it and how do we sign up yeah so there is two ways of doing it there are you can either do donation based up to fifty dollars please or otherwise this is free so please go ahead and you check it out more than fifty dollars if you want to you can, yes, you can donate okay. more than $50, absolutely, if you wish to. Um, but the purpose of this is so that it's interactive and definitely helping, you know, wisdom. Wisdom of okay, all. So where, where does the interactive part come in? So the interactive part is that if we're going to have lecture and workshop, we're interlacing that so that, you know, you're not just sitting in front of a lecture listening to something, but as soon as you hear something, the next one will help you in some way, and it might be a different topic, but you will, we're connecting the dots here because we're talking about different things to help you integrate what you just learned. Okay. And so it'll either be a workshop on a practice or, for example, a remote viewing like what you're doing, which is incredible. So excited for that. Uh, yes. um, so all of these tools are, are important for us, and we really need to get on the back bandwagon and learn you know as much as we can and develop our tools in these directions so that's what it's about yeah. so yeah Alan, thank you so, well you're so generous in putting your time into this 
this is uh, this is life. This is beauty. This is beautiful connection and necessary. And we need education right now. So this is what I'm passionate about, Alan. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of this. It is a gift to have you and your work. Oh. Thank you. Well, it's great to know you, Nick, and we'll do. I'm happy to thank you so much for asking me to be part of this. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. And uh, please check out the links below for Alan's book and his information, how to connect with him, and also all of our other uh, speakers that will be there um, on September 24th to the 26th. You can register down below, and we look forward to seeing you there. Take care.